The Composition API is the biggest new feature that came with Vue 3. But what is the Composition API? Well, it gives us a new way to create Vue components, an alternative to the Options API. Now, we can still use the Options API in Vue 3 apps, but I would consider using the Composition API exclusively, especially on more complicated apps and Vue components. The Composition API solves two main problems that we sometimes see with Options API apps, especially more complicated apps. Number one, it allows us to more easily group relevant code together in the script sections of our view components. And number two, it allows us to reuse our code more easily, as in our reactive data and our methods and watches, etc., using composables. And to demonstrate this first point, let's take a look at this options API code. So in the options API, we have our default export and within that, we have all of our different options separated out. And by options, I mean things like data, methods, and lifecycle hooks. And in this example here, we have two completely unrelated sets of data. We have a username property and a property for determining whether or not a modal is shown. And then in our methods option, we have a method for updating the username and a method for showing the modal by changing this data property. And we also have a lifecycle hook the mounted hook, which will fire both of these methods. However, all of the relevant code is separated out. We have the username up here, the method for the username down here, and the trigger of this method in this mounted hook down here. And this means that in more complicated components, we have to do lots of scrolling up and down to data, methods, computed properties, lifecycle hooks, in order to work on code which is related. The Composition API solves this problem by allowing us to remove all of these options and allowing us to group all of our code together logically. Let's take a look at a Composition API version of this code. And in this example, we're doing exactly the same thing. We're setting up reactive data variables for our username and our isModalShown data properties. We're setting up methods for manipulating these data properties. And we're still triggering these methods in the mounted hook here and here, except this time all of our relevant code is grouped together. All of the code related to the username is grouped together here, and all of the code related to the modal is grouped together here. And with the Composition API, it's not just data properties, methods, and lifecycle hooks we can group together. We can group together everything, whether it's computed properties, watches, directives, etc. So this makes our lives much easier especially when we're working on much more complicated and longer view components. The second problem that the Composition API solves is that it makes it much easier for us to reuse code across our components using composables. In the Options API, we could share code across components using mixins. Let's take a look at our Options API code example again. Let's say we want to reuse our username data property and our update username method across multiple components. In the Options API, we could extract this code into a mixin, such as this, where we've literally just cut the username data property and the update username method and put it into a mixin. And we can then import this mixin into a component or a bunch of different components like this, import mixin username from, etc. But in this example here, we're also importing a different mixin, which is unrelated this mixin modal mixin. And you can see that in the mounted hook, we're firing a method from the mixin username, this update username method. The problem is that it's not obvious where this method is coming from. Is it coming from the username mixin or is it coming from the modal mixin? And if you're not familiar with the project that you're currently working on, you might not be able to tell where this method is coming from without actually opening up these mixin files and looking through the code. And again, this can become a huge problem in more complicated view apps where we have many different components, and many different mixins being used. Let's take a look at our Composition API example again. So let's say we wanna do the same thing. We wanna extract the username data variable and we wanna extract this update username method. Well, we can cut these out and paste them into a composable, which would look something like this. So in a composable, we just export a function and you can see within that we have our username data variable and our update username method as well and we can then import this composable into any view component we want like this so we just import the root level function which we exported 
Then we can use destructuring to extract only the stuff that we need from that composable. In this case, we're extracting the username, data variable, and the update username method. And now when we use something from our composable, such as in this mounted hook, we're firing the update username method, we can see exactly where this method is coming from. So again, this becomes a massive advantage with the composition API, especially on much more complicated apps and view components. So hopefully this explains the massive advantages which come with the composition API over the options API. This clip was taken from my full course, View 3 Composition API with Pinia and Veet. If you're familiar with View 2 and the options API, this course will teach you everything you need to know to switch over to the composition API. Grab the full course with my discount at dannys.link slash composition API, or you can watch almost half of the content for free here on YouTube. And I'll put that up here. And if that's not what you're seeing right now, then make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss that.